Hey there guys, this is I Heels, and this is my Warden Healing Guide, and uh, I want to start off by talking about a little known secret to most Wardeners, is this ability called Dangers of the Deep. Now, Dangers of the Deep is actually applied by Tasking Geyser. Now, when you first look at Geyser, you go, okay, yeah, that's great, does some damage, heals a little bit. Yeah, it's not near any of my other healing abilities. Why would I ever use that? Well, you use Geyser because it applies stacks of Dangers of the Deep. Yes, Geyser's going to heal a little bit. Probably not going to be able to keep up a full raid. Doing a lot of damage, especially if you're not as geared. However, um, keeping it, continue, casting it every once in a while to keep this Dangers of the Deep stack is going to be huge. Because for every stack, of the dangers of the deep, you get a 3% increased healing. You also get a 1 per second increase in duration for every stack that you have up to 5 stacks. So that's a total of 15% increased healing and an additional 5 seconds for your heal over times. This is huge um, when paired with Monsoon. Monsoon basically just throws out every heal over time you have all your instant heal over times and so not only are all those heal over times going to be rolling on everybody you're going to get the 15 percent increase in healing you're also going to get um, the extra five seconds from it for each of those heal over times like i said it's pretty much god mode so <laughs> uh so i just wanted to point that out immediately because a lot of people look at this and not realize, uh, not a lot of people know about Geyser. Alright, so let's go into the main rotation. Let's go ahead and take this off the bar. And let's talk about the main rotation. Alright, and uh, so the main rotation is Cascade, Pool of Restoration, Healing Cataract, and Healing Effusion is my main rotation. I like to keep Cascade in my main rotation because it's kind of like one of those preventative maintenance things. Um, some people use Cascade for when they get low mana, that, that really tough situation where you're like, oh man, I'm out of mana. But the idea with this is that you're continually giving yourself 15% mana back every minute, which is going to end up preventing you from needing to use Cascade in that oh shit situation because you're going to get a lot more Cascades, a lot more mana uses. Instead of trying to save it for that specific moment when you need it. Um, it's an instant cast, so it's not like your open water where you're sitting there trying to press Q um, you know, to get your mana back. It's something that's just an instant cast. Alright, Pool of Restoration. So I've seen a lot of people suggest that you save this for kind of those oh shit moments where you need big heals. But look at the cooldown of Pool Restoration. It's only 15 seconds. That's such a short cooldown that, uh, personally, I think I prefer to include it in my rotation to continually keep it going and uh, get that extra bit of continuous healing. I'm also going to, it's, uh, let's see, so a little bit of an explanation on Pool of Restoration is. It does not, it, it's a little bit of a tricky explanation. When you cast it on someone, it will be cast on 10 people. But the 10 people it's cast on will not be healed. What will happen is that the people it is cast on, the people next to them, that are standing next to them, up to three people next to them, will receive up to... Uh, 1100 to 1200 heals from the person it's cast on. So if you have 10 people, they're all stacked. If you cast this ability, every person is going to, it, it's going to do massive healing to everyone around each other. It's kind of a, a tricky spell to, to kind of grasp, but basically. When you cast it on those 10 people, they're not going to get healed. They end up healing everyone around them. So in turn, they're going to get healed because they're getting healed by the people next to them. Um, so that's kind of what it means when it says that 
10 party raid members can be affected by it, but uh, it restores up to 1,100 to 1,200, up to up to three nearby party or raid members. All right, uh, I mean, that's huge healing, especially since it's on 15 second cooldown and the mana cost is so little, it's 507. All right, healing cataract. This is your main healing ability. You do have to hit stand still. And it heals for about 1700. And this is mainly for your continuous uh, raid damage that you got going on. It's not really for burst healing, it's just kind of to maintain everybody's health. So, one mistake a lot of people probably do, and I know I made the mistake at first when I started Professor of Warden, is they look at healing effusion and go, hey, healing effusion is 2300 uh, health. Why would I? And it's instant. Why would I sit here and use healing cataract? when it's much less, and it takes two seconds to cast. Well, the issue is the mana. Look at the mana cost. The mana cost for healing cataract is seventeen or uh, 676. If you look at the cost for healing effusion, it's 1775. It almost costs three times the mana for about double the healing. So if you think about that, it's really not as healing efficient. So why use Healing Effusion at all? Well, Healing Effusion is actually really good for burst healing. So it's for those times where not a lot of damage is it's not like an instant huge hit, but you're taking quite a bit of damage, whereas Healing Cataract is just not getting people to full health. It might be time to cast Healing Effusion. So a lot of, like a lot of the other macros, I utilize the standing still versus the running. If I stand still, I'll continually cast Healing Cataract, but if I'm running, I can't cast Healing Cataract. It's just not available. But with this macro, it'll still allow me to cast Healing Infusion. So why cast Healing Infusion while I'm running? It's so mana inefficient. Well, the way I see it is a lot of times if you're raid healing and you guys are running, Usually you're running away from something. <laughs> so it usually means that there's one or two people that might not have gotten out of the circle or might still be taking damage that just aren't moving quick enough to get out of that, to avoid that damage. Anytime you're moving, you're going to want to get those quick burst heals out to try and keep everybody alive. So it works out really well in this situation. Well, eye heals. What if I need to use healing effusion and... I can't use it because it keeps casting Healing Cataract while I'm standing still. Well, here's something you're just going to have to practice. You're just going to have to move forward and backwards as you cast uh, Healing Effusion. So you don't have to move much. You kind of just move in the same spot. User entered your channel. But you can specify that you can... Sound muted. Sound resumed. Sound muted. I apologize for that. I, uh, you can actually use healing effusion on command just by moving. So a little practice, you can actually easily distinguish whether you want to heal one or the other. That's the main rotation for this. Um, you'll notice that I also have at self a cool restoration. This is a preference. You can either cast it at yourself, but the way I figure is I'm always going to be standing near the raid. 99% of the time. So if I'm clicking on the tank, as I normally do out of habit, uh, I don't want just the tank to get Pool of Restoration. I would rather it be cast on me, or the 10 people around me where I'm standing next to the raid, and have to hit all of them. So that's why I use the at self for that. Alright guys, so we talked about the normal rotation. Let's get into the oh shit button. Basically, it's shift, left click. So the order of the oh shit button is Tidal Surge, Monsoon, Downpour, Wave of Renewal, and then Healing Effusion. So one thing I want to point out is you're going to see GTAE at GTAE for Downpour. Basically, what this does inside of a macro is it prevents me from having to click on the ground. So normally with Downpour, you would click it, then you would have to place it click on the floor. With GTAE, I no longer have to do that. I can just cast it at the current location of my target. So I'll show you how that works in a second. 
All right, so I'm going to go through the rotation. I'm going to get a uh, title surge is going to basically make me increase my healing by a percentage of 80%. Tied in with Monsoon, that is huge because now all your heal over times are doing 80% more damage, all three of them. If you have your Dangers of the Deeps rolling, you're also going to get an extra 5 seconds out of your Monsoon, which is why it's so important to keep this guy up, especially for Monsoon. Um, so it's it's pretty, it's god mode pretty much for ten players in your party. They can't die. I, I don't think if it something kills you with this combo, there's no way you were gonna make it at least. <laughs> so it's really important to keep this rolling so that when you do need your title surge and monsoon, you get these huge burst healing. Downpour. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll once I map monsoon is cast, I'll kind of hold off on casting my own shit button. Usually by this point, Monsoon is healing so much that I really don't need to do any, if, if a little bit, if any healing uh, while Monsoon is running. It's, even if it's an oh shit moment, because pretty much everybody's getting the full health. Now, what you do need to do, or what, what I prefer to do, as I pick time by pressing Q, and I have my Q set up to my open water, and I try and recover as much mana as I can by using Monsoon. So it's kind of like a, a, a double, kind of a, a double effect. So you use Monsoon and you're going to bring everybody up. Very rarely do you actually need to heal in addition to using Monsoon with a Tidal Surge and Dangers of the Deep. But if you don't, you can sit here and press Q, get your mana back. By the time Tidal Surge, or by the time... Monsoon runs out, you've got full mana, you're good to go, you're back in the game. And you've only got to wait about a minute before you can use Monsoon again to get all that mana back. So it's really a, kind of an efficient way to manage your mana. Now, <clears throat> after Downpour or Monsoon, if Monsoon is down, I kind of, like I said, I cast Monsoon, I kind of wait before I keep going with my own shit button once I see Monsoon go out. If there's still like a second time where there's an oh shit button, this is when I'll cast Downpour and Wave of the Renewal. So, both Downpour and Wave of the Renewal are cast, so you're going to have to stand still to get these off, which can be kind of a pain. It's going to take a little practice, especially when you're panicking, to get this down. But, the nice thing is, is that, let's go ahead and get our Monsoon out. If I'm running... And I keep trying to cast Downpour or Wave of Renewal. You're going to notice that they don't cast. Which is why I have Healing Effusion last. Um, basically, this is to your advantage. So if you're running, you don't accidentally cast Downpour or Wave of Renewal. And waste them without even being able to cast them. So you don't have to worry as long as you're running... As long as you're casting it after you're running. Now the only time you can really cancel them is if you're sitting here and you click it. And then all of a sudden you move and you interrupt it. Well now you're screwed. Now you got a cooldown and you're not going to be able to cast it until it's off cooldown. Now I need to go a little bit more into downpour but we're going to have to wait for the cooldown. So let me go ahead and talk about Wave of Renewal. Wave of Renewal has a mechanic where if you cast it, it's going to go out and it's going to heal for about 8,000. It's a really cool graphic of this bubble that just spreads outward. Now, it heals everybody on its way out, expanding for 8,000. If you cancel Wave of Renewal ahead of time, the wave will not come back in and heal for another 8,000 health. You have to make the full Wave of Renewal cast and it will come back in and it will almost double its healing. It will double its healing because it will keep track and heal again for another 8,000. But like I said, only if you get the full cast off. <coughs> Sometimes, well you might go, well why even cancel it? While you're having to sit here and channel this for 3 seconds, depending on the fight, there could be significant raid healing that needs to be done. And you're just kind of using this to... 
get everybody up really quick. You're not really worried about efficiency. You can pop this, get the 8,000 going out, and within a second move, and then use healing infusion to pull everybody up. Um, it's kind of one of those situations where by the time you get to this ability, usually people are like 10% health, 20% health. And that extra second of waiting could mean the difference between someone dying or bringing them up. So even though, yes, it's not as much healing, it's not as healing efficient, waiting for that wave to return is not always the correct thing to wait for it to return uh, if your raid is taking a significant amount of damage. Okay, so going back to Downpour, we talked about the GTA E. So what you're going to notice is as I cast my abilities, let me put Monsoon on cooldown. Alright. Now as soon as I click on myself, it's going to instantly cast Downpour right on me. I'm not going to have to click on the ground, I don't have to worry about where it's going, it's just everyone around me is going to get healed. But this isn't limited to being cast on myself. I can also cast it on a tank if the tank is far away. Maybe there's two or three tanks of me that needs raid heals at the same time. I can click on the, the actual tank and have downpour cast on them. Obviously the raid's not going to get healed by downpour because the enemy's too far away, but I can actually manage the location just by clicking on the people that need it. So that's the purpose of GTA E. Anytime you use these kind of modifiers with um, targeting, actually placing it on the ground for you, it's going to place it on the target that you have selected. So This is why it's important to put target pound pound. This way, whenever you click on someone with this oh shit button, it's going to target that person to ensure that they're the one targeted when downpour is initiated. So that maybe you have, say maybe you have this guy, and he's actually way off in the mountains behind me, but I'm trying to heal this guy in front of me. And while I actually physically have him targeted, I click here. Now imagine this guy's way back there. He's not next to me. When I click on here, I'm going to click on the nameplate. I'm going to expect this guy to be hit the down for. But in actuality, because he's actually targeted, even though I'm clicking on his name, Downpour is going to be cast on him back there. That's why it's so important to actually have the macro target your, for you to actually target the player as you click on the face plates. And that's basically the explanation for the oh shit button. Alright, looking at the right mouse button, we have shift for ripple. Well, ripple is kind of a situational thing and it's kind of uh, an opportunist kind of ability. What I mean by that is Ripple will spread your hots that are currently on the target to everyone else around them. So it kind of takes a lot of planning ahead and a lot of precision to really be effective with it. Because if you have something like just a uh, healing spray on there, yeah you're going to be able to spread a healing spray but you're not going to get as much healing as if, say, you had your soothing stream going along with your healing spray. So it says spreads the healing spray and the soothing stream from the target to additional five targets, party, or raid members. So I try and use it here and there. And it's an extremely powerful ability. It is very hard to get used to. It's something that when you're a new healer, you have to take a lot of practice. But once you get used to it, it's not too bad. Um, but just be aware of that that's how it works. My middle mouse button, just like my purifier spec, is my cleanse. So something to note about the cleanses. Alright, so now we're looking at the middle mouse button for cleanses. Uh, what we have is the curative waters and the cleansing waters. So one cool thing about Warden is your AoE cleanse, your curative waters, does continue to roll for three seconds. So if you guys are familiar with the toilet bowl boss in, uh, I can't remember, it's either TDQ, I think it's in TDQ, 
I could be wrong about that, but where basically the water comes up and swirls and you gotta keep running and the little creatures keep eating on your ass and they're like, oh no, I'm slow, no, no, and even if you cleanse it, it comes back and they're like, oh no, I can't move, no, I'm dead. So with this ability, basically you can cast it and at least for three seconds it'll give them that opportunity to keep moving. Maybe that's the difference between a death, between switching directions. Um, it is only available every 10 seconds. So you might even want to blow it in the beginning of that swirl phase. I don't know how long the swirl phase lasts. Uh, but you might be able to get a second curative waters off during the switch if it is more than 10 seconds. Anyways, kind of diverging there. So that's one really cool thing about your AoE cleanse. Your cleansing water is your basic cleanse. It can't. It's not active unless the person actually has a debuff on them. So you don't accidentally cleanse them without a debuff, which is really not a big deal, but it does save a little bit of mana. So that's all I'm going to say about cleansing. Also note that even though the, your AoE has a cleanse, well, uh, has a cooldown of 10 seconds, the bosses usually will not put AoE um, debuffs on the raid within 10 seconds. There is this kind of timed event where you will have enough time for your curative waters to come back up before you have to cleanse again. So there's no worries about like, oh no, I'm going to use curative cleanse um, before the uh, debuffs comes out. It kind of comes out right at the right time. So, uh, so far I haven't seen any boss where it hasn't always been about 10 seconds for the AoE cleanse anyways. Alright, so unlike a purifier, there are actually a mouse button 4 and a mouse button 5. So, mouse button 4 is going to be your healing spud. So for me, that button is fairly easy to click, the uh, mouse button 4. So maybe on your mouse, mouse button 5 is easier to click. You can switch these around. Feel free to change it according to your preference. However, mouse button 4 is very easy for me to click, so I like to keep it for my healing flood as I am continually trying to keep healing flood up on the raid. And uh, it's one of those things where I'm going to be constantly casting it, and I like it very easily accessible. Now if I hold shift, I can sit here and... Cast Soothing Stream, supposedly, but it does not look like it is casting it. I'll have to look into that, but it's supposed to be that when you hold Shift, Soothing Stream can be cast on that target. Um, and you can stack that up. Now we have Mouse Button 5, you've got Healing Spray. Mouse button 5 is a little bit further out, but healing spray, usually you cast it once and kind of forget about it until it runs out. And so I'm not continually casting it, whereas the actually the healing flood, sometimes it misses people, I gotta run around and kind of get it on everyone. And mouse wheel up, or mouse wheel up is my battle res as it is in purifier. This just kind of keeps everything consistent, so there's not too much trying to figure things out. Alright, so just to recap, basically, in the raid, you will be left-clicking continually to heal everybody for steady damage. And you don't really have to worry about whether you're moving or running, or standing still, the macro will take care of that for you. Uh, you have an oh shit moment, oh my god, something's happening, I hold shift, and I continue to left click. And I'm left clicking, and I'm waiting for my downpour to finish. And oh no, that didn't finish it, so now I'm waiting for a wave of renewal. Oh my god, and now I am using healing diffusion. Because none of that seemed to save anybody, or someone's still standing in the pool. Alright, so, that's pretty much... The majority of it is the left click and then the shift right click. Like I said, uh, I do have right. I have right click. I'm sorry, left click and shift left click. I now have right click set up to do damage to the target of the target. Unfortunately, I can't just demonstrate this to you in the uh, 
video only because I can only target myself, and if I'm targeting myself, the target of my target is myself, and I don't want to do damage to myself, so I cannot use that, but I would be sitting here spamming my right mouse button to make sure I never see this icon. I hate this icon. I want it to go away. I never want to see it. So I'm going to continually right click until it goes away, and I'm just going to sit here and left left click, left click, left click, um, right click. Uh, when I need to see this go back up, I am going to mouse button four in between my left clicks to make sure everybody has this roll in. I might do uh, mouse button five on the tank to give them that little bit of boost in healing or anyone that might be taking a little bit of extra damage. I just kind of cast my healing spray on them while keeping this maintained. Right clicking to make sure this goes away. And I left click, left click, left click, and I, oh shit, left click, shift left click, oh my god, they're taking damage, oh my god. Now notice that if I hold shift left, uh, if I hold shift and left click, and I click too much, it will also cancel those casts, so it's going to take some practice to actually get those casts to the point where you're like, okay, Monsoon went out, okay, I have to heal, stand still, and not click. Okay, my downpour is done. Now I have to sit here and shift click again. I have to wait, I have to wait, I have to wait. Okay, now I can continue spam clicking. Um, that's pretty much it. And you'll find that you can pull, uh, well, with the gear I have, which is given not all raid gear, it's just kind of dungeon gear, some raid gear, but I can pull about 11 to 12k on uh, healing types of fights. There's a lot of raid damage. One last note about Warden, and I didn't talk about this much in the guide, but so I wanted to bring this up, is you'll notice I do have Q for open water. Why do I have Q for open water? Well, because there are times where, uh, as I talked about with the Monsoon, you'll want to try and get as much mana back as you can to be as efficient as you can. Even if you were to click this and move suddenly, you still got one or two ticks of 5% of your mana back. So you can just cast this and don't feel bad about um, actually interrupting it. I cast it every second I get. Every time I'm not casting something else. First thing I'm doing is I'm casting Q. So in addition to continually running your... Uh, oh, what the hell is the name of that spell? Cascade. You also have your backup of continually casting open water. If you get this rotation down and you get used to casting Q when there's not much damage going on, you'll find that you'll never run out of mana, even for the long drawn out fights, bard, what's a bard, so you'll be alright. I just wanted to bring that up, as it will take a little practice, and I do like putting it on Q, so I'm not having to sit here click, 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 oh I need mana, click, 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 oh I need to heal, click, 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 I just press Q, and it's taken care of.